Step 2. Secret sharing. In this step, we're going to begin with our first application of multipartite quantum states. Let's imagine the scenario where a group of friends that are using quantum network would like to share some secrets. The first question is, what is a secret? Well, it's really any information shared by a subset of nodes that's not revealed to the rest of the network. That's the main scenario, main goal of uh, this application. Imagine that we have a following network over here, and we've got a subset of green nodes that are our friends that are trying to share a secret. So we have four friends represented by these green circles. And they may be wishing to share a classical bit C or a quantum state Psi. In here, we're going to consider the simplest case involving only three nodes. We're going to call them nodes A, B, and C, and they're going to try and share a secret classical bit. So they're going to have one bit that one of them knows and would like to spread this information only between the subsets of A, B, and C, without revealing this information to the rest of the nodes. First, this is how the recipe starts. First, nodes A and B, they prepare a shared GHZ state. The GHZ state, just to remind you, is an equal superposition where all the states are zero plus all the states are one. In this case, we're only considering three nodes, so we've got three zeros plus three ones. This notation means that node A is in possession of the first qubit, node B is in possession of the second qubit, and node C is in possession of the third qubit. Then, nodes A, B, and C, they pick at random a number from the set 0 or pi over 2. So each will have a random number. Node A will have alpha, node B will have beta, and node C will have the random number gamma. And all of these numbers, alpha, beta, gamma, will be either 0 or pi over 2. Then what the nodes do, depending on what number they generated, they're going to apply a phase gate to their qubit in their possession in their quantum memory. To remind you, a phase gate is given by this following expression. So it has um, diagonal elements equal to 1 and this phase uh, e to the i phi, and the off diagonal elements are 0. This means that if we apply the phase gate to the 0 state, nothing happens, we don't change the state. But if we apply it to the 1 state, then we introduce a phase e to the i phi. So, after the nodes apply their phase gates based on their values of alpha, beta, gamma, the shared state is now different. It's this GHZ looking state, but with a relative phase in between those zeros and ones, given by the sum of alpha, beta, and gamma. You can check this for yourself quite easily. Then what the nodes do, they measure their qubit in the Pauli X basis. And this generates classical outcomes or classical bits. So node A will have a classical outcome A, which is either plus one or minus one. Node B will also have a classical outcome, which will denote B, plus one, minus one. And node C's outcome is denoted by small c, which is again plus one or minus one. So which bit is the secret? Well, it turns out that any of the classical outcomes, A, B, and C, can become the secret. So in our example for concreteness, we're going to pick C. Node C's outcome of the measurement in the X basis is going to be the secret. So node C knows the value of, of the outcome. It's either plus one or minus one. But nodes B and node A don't. So now we have to think of the question. How can node A and node B obtain the value of node C's measurement outcome while still keeping it a secret? So without revealing it to the rest of the network. And this can be achieved by a clever trick and by imposing the requirement that the product of the classical outcomes, A times B times C, times a number D, which we will talk about immediately now, is equal to 1. This D has the following form. It's the cosine of the sum of alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha, beta, and gamma, just to remind you, are the uh, random numbers which are either 0 or pi over 2. So now all three nodes declare their random phases, alpha, beta, gamma, to the network. So everybody, any eavesdropper, knows what, they, what the nodes initially generated. 
protocol proceeds only if the sum of these phases is either 0 or a pi. Remember, these phases are random. So if all of them are 0, alpha is equal to 0, beta is equal to 0, gamma is equal to 0, then the protocol proceeds because their sum is also equal to 0. Their sum being equal to pi means that two of them are uh, pi over 2 and one is a 0. If this is not true, then um, the protocol stops, the state is discarded, and the nodes have to start again. Now, why, why this particular choice? That's because cosine of the sum of the phases, so cosine of alpha plus beta plus gamma, has to be equal to plus 1 or minus 1 by imposing that the sum is 0 or pi. This tells us something about the product of the classical outcomes A, B, C. It means that A times B times C is equal to plus 1 when the sum of the phases is equal to 0 or it's equal to minus 1 when the sum of the phases is equal to pi. So now nodes A and B use a, their private channel. So they must have some way of communicating privately without revealing the contents of the communication to the rest of the network. And they exchange their classical measurement outcomes. So A learns the value of B and node B learns the value of A. So let's look what consequences this has on the following product. We have A times B times C is equal to plus or minus 1, depending on the phases, as we said. But now, because A and B know the classical outcome small a, small b, they also know the value of the product of small a times small b. This allows them to infer the value of C quite easily from this formula. And we are done. We have achieved our goal. All three nodes share the secret, secret classical bit uh, C that was generated uh, by the measurement of node C in the Pauli basis, a Pauli X basis. How about any potential eavesdroppers? By uh, revealing the phases alpha, beta, gamma, are we revealing anything about the classical bit, about the secret that A, B, C are trying to share? Let's go back to the three qubit uh, G agent state uh, with the relative phase alpha, beta, gamma, and see um, what happens before we measure it. So in here, we have written the state in the Pauli X basis rather than in the computational basis. And we see that we have a group of terms at the top that have even parity, meaning they either have zero uh, qubits in the state minus or exactly two qubits in the state minus. And this is their probability amplitude. They share the same probability amplitude. The bottom row of states has odd parity, meaning there is one or three qubits which are in the state minus. And they have a different probability amplitude given by this uh, expression. So the only difference is that we ha here we have one plus, here we have one minus the phase. So when the sum of the phases alpha, beta, gamma is equal to zero, only odd parity measurements are possible. So the measurements, when we measurement outcomes, when we multiply them, will always give a plus one. On the other hand, alpha, beta, gamma, when we sum them together and they are equal to pi, then only the bottom, uh, bottom case is possible, only odd parity is possible. But whichever case it, ha it is, whether the sum of the phases is zero or pi, all of the local measurements are completely random. So, the, any eavesdropper that's listening to the conversations between A, B, and C, and hears the announcement of alpha, beta, gamma, doesn't get, get any information about uh, the measurement outcomes or the probabilities of the possible measurement outcomes uh, when we measure the state. Meaning, the eavesdropper doesn't learn anything about the secret. So notice that C that is, does not need to be the one generating the classical secret. The protocol is symmetric. So in fact, it could be any two nodes can discover the third node's secret. We may have picked small a as our secret, and then b and c could use their private channel in order to discover the value of that secret. And this is true whether the node cooperates or it doesn't. 
this is a way of a, uh, it's kind of like a generalization to three-party quantum key distribution. So how about n nodes trying to share uh, a secret classical bit? Well, in that case, we require n minus one nodes that can uh, um, uh, recreate the bit held by the last node. And also the network needs to provide steady supply of n qubit GHZ state in order to not share only one secret, but many secrets. And also we require a lot of classical messaging. So this is not so good um, when we think about the load on the, the overall load on the network. This concludes our basic discussion of secret sharing.